الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Jews from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and before we start our topic I want to say to you my dear brothers and sisters that I love you for the sake of Allah we should love all the Muslims we should love the Muslims no? why? because we are brothers to one another so I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, once a man passed, you know, he passed in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was this sahabi who was sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah, he says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, I love this man. Now, I love this man. Mean, I love him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him, Fahal akhbartahu? Did you inform him? Have you you, did you tell him that you love him for the sake of Allah? He said, no. He said, no, no, stand up, go and tell him. No? Stand up, go and tell him that you love him for the sake of Allah. So the man, the Sahabi, he stood up, he went to, to, to say to him, uh, I love you for the sake of Allah. So the man said, May the one for whom you have loved me love you. And who is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Myself also, my dear brothers and sisters, I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our discussion for tonight, my dear brothers and sisters, the topic is very, very much serious. Now, we'll be discussing al-ghiba. Ghiba is backbiting, to speak ill behind someone else's back, meaning in his absence. The person is not here, and you take him as the topic of discussion. You know, our cousin... Ya Allah, in that function, the way she was dressed, she thought she was the Cinderella. She thought she was the queen. Huh? Did you see the way she was eating? She ate so much huh, that she couldn't even breathe. Allahu Akbar. Huh? Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-ghibatu dhikruka akhaka bima yakra. That ghiba. Backbiting is to speak of something or some qualities of your brother or your sister in, her, in their absence, but something that he will dislike or she will dislike. If he hears that you said one, two, three about him, he will be angry, he will be upset with you. So this is riba. Now, so nowadays this, it has become very much common uh, in our homes, at places of work, amongst friends, amongst families, uh, discussing other people's faults, discussing other people's businesses. You know, he, he, think, he thinks he's, he's the boss, you know. He thinks he's the main guy there. Wallahi, you know, we are committing a very, very big mistake and very big sin. If you have done, if you have seen somebody doing something wrong, your responsibility is with respect, call him aside. Do not discuss him with other people. Now, don't discuss him with other people. You call him aside, you sit down with him, give him some coffee, give him some tea, and you correct his mistake. You know what, my brother? You know what you are doing is not correct. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be angry with you. Imagine in which condition. If you die like this, how are you going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Give him some beautiful advice. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. Say good words and kind words to the people. This is a command uh, in the Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, instead of us sitting together around the table, we are having our meals, we are enjoying our food. At the same time, we are enjoying talking bad about people. Huh? And it is happening. We talk about our cousins. We talk about our neighbors. We talk about our friends. Instead of talking good, we talk bad. We talk about their faults. And sometimes we go around trying to see, try to find and search, you know, people's faults. 
And definitely if you search people's faults, you will find them because we are human. All of us are human. No one is perfect. We all make mistakes. No? Everybody makes mistakes. No one, we're not angels. We're not ma'asumun. We're not ma'asum and al khata. We are not protecting from committing mistakes and errors. Except the Anbiya alayhim surat wa taslim. You know, the prophets of Allah. Uh, 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 may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be happy with them. Uh, may the peace and salutation of Allah be upon them. Na? So those, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them. Uh, as for me and you, the hadith says, Kullu, ba, kullu ibn Adam khattaun, wa khayrul khattaina attawabun. That all children of Adam do make mistakes, they commit errors. And the best amongst those are those who make tawbah. Those who repent, those who realize that whatever I have done was wrong, and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا اسْتَيْقَضَ إِبْنُ آدَمْ فَإِنَّ الْأَعْضَاءَ كُلَّهَا تُكَفِّرُ اللِّسَانِ تَقُولْ إِتَّقِ اللَّهَ فِينَا فَإِنَّا نَحْنُ بِكْ إِذَا اسْتَقَمْتَ إِسْتَقَمْتَ إِسْتَقَمْنَا وَإِذَا عَوَجَجْتَ إِعَوَجَجْنَا اتَّقِ اللَّهَ فِينَا فَإِنَّا نَحْنُ بِكْ The hadith says that every morning or every time the person gets up, all the limbs of his body, they humble themselves and to the tongue. They implore the tongue to be straight. They implore the tongue not to, com to commit mistakes, not to commit sins. And they say, you know what? We depend on you. We are your followers. إذا استيقظ ابن آدم فإن الأعضاء كلها تكفر اللسان. Now, all the limbs of the person, all the limbs of the person, what do they do? They implore, they humble themselves to the tongue. You see, the tongue is a small piece of meat, the small piece of flesh inside our mouth. And the way Allah SWT has put it inside our mouth, he put the tongue and he put, you know, teeth so they can protect the tongue. It's like a door, a gate. And also, he gave us lips. Huh? It's like a gate also. So, how many gates? Uh, two gates, the lips and the, and, and the teeth, in order to protect our tongue because this tongue is very dangerous. How many divorce, divorces are caused by the tongue? How many wars in the world are caused by the tongue? How many murders are committed through because of the tongue? Somebody said something, finish. He took his gun and he shot him. Somebody said, the husband said something, the wife became angry, she asked for divorce. The wife, the, the wife said something, the husband became angry, he divorced the wife. You know? So this tongue is very, very, very dangerous. So the hadith says, every day, whenever the person gets up in the morning, all the limbs of his body, they implore, they humble themselves to the tongue, and they say, Ittaqillaha fina, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding us. Have taqwa of Allah regarding us. Now, we don't want to be punished by Allah because of you. فَإِنَّا نَحْنُ بِكَ Because we depend on you. إِذَا اسْتَقَمْتَ اسْتَقَمْنَا If you are straight, we will also be straight. Allahu Akbar. If your tongue is straight, then your ears also will be straight. Your eyes will be straight. Their heart will be straight. Your hands will be straight. Your entire body will be straight if your tongue is straight. إِذَا اسْتَقَمْتَ اسْتَقَمْنَا وَإِذَا عَوَجَجْتَ اِعْوَجَجْنَا if you are crooked, you are not straight, we will also be crooked. Now, the limbs are imploring the tongue to be straight. Now, Allahu Akbar, this small piece of flesh, very, very dangerous. On the day of Qiyamah, many, many people, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save me and you, my brothers and sisters. Many people will go to Jahannam because of the tongue and because of the private paths. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, that whosoever, you know, promised to, promise to protect two things. 
Whosoever promised me to protect two things, I guarantee him Jannah. The first one is, what is between the two lips, mean the tongue, the person who, who protects his tongue, he will be in Jannah, inshallah. If he dies with Iman, through the Rahmah of Allah, he will be in Jannah. And the person who protects his private parts, he stays away from zina. May Allah SWT protect each and every one of us from zina. May Allah SWT protect us from each and every, you know, protect us from, you know, ghibah. Now, imagine you carry tales, you, you, you listen something from this person and you carry it to, to that person. You take it from that person, you, you bring it to this person. What are you doing? You are causing, you know, uh, friction. You are causing problems between the two people. You are bringing problems between families. You are bringing problems between a husband and wife. I saw your wife doing this. As somebody maybe you know, uh, your wife might be walking on, 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 on a street and a man was asking for directions and she was giving him direction. So you saw her with this man. You go and you report to the husband. I saw your wife with a man. And the man becomes angry and he divorces his wife. Come Qiyama. You are responsible. You are responsible. Allahu Akbar. Now, the tongue is very, very dangerous. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا أَيُحِبُّ أَحْدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَقِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ says, do not uh, speak bad or speak ill of one another. Don't backbite one another. Now, أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا Does anyone amongst you love or wishes or desires to eat the flesh or the meat of his dead brother? Something that you dislike. فَكَرِهْ تُمُّهُ You should dislike this. Stay away from this. Now, so we will take a short break, inshallah. When we come back, we will continue. We'll carry on, inshallah, speaking about the consequences and the evil of al -ghibah. We will see you after this break, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome back. We are discussing the evil of ghiba, the tongue, protect the tongue. This small piece of flesh, it can cause husband and wife to divorce. It can cause, you know, families not to talk to each other. It can cause countries to fight, you know, it's very, very, very dangerous piece of flesh that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. If we can use this piece of flesh, we can use our tongue for the recitation of the Quran, how much reward we'll gain, we'll get from Allah. You use the tongue to recite, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Yaseen wal Quran al Hakim, Tabarak al biyadihi al Mulk, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Now, we use the tongue to recite the Quran. We use the tongue to advise the people. We use the tongue to reconcile between those people who are fighting. We use this tongue for the dhikrullah, uh, for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, a sahabi asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man najat, man najat ya Rasulullah. What is, you know, the means of salvation? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, لا يزال لسانك رطبا بذكر الله Keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a ni'ma. This tongue, it's a ni'ma. And whatever we have, فَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ And all the ni'ma that we have, they come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بقبرين فقال أما إنهما لا يعذبان. Once the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم passed by two graves and he looked at the two graves and he says to his Sahaba رضي الله عنهم the inmates of those two graves are getting punishment they have been punished in their graves. نعم وما يعذبان في كبير بل إنه كبير they are not being punished because of something very difficult to abstain from. But the punishment is severe. The punishment that these two are getting is very much severe, is great. Now, they are being punished for something very easy to abstain. And he said, أَمَا أَحَدُهُمَا فَأَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَتِذُ مِنْ بَوْلِهِ 
As for the one of the owners of those two graves, one of them is being punished because he was not, you know, uh, 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 he was not uh, hygienic, you know, and he never used to protect himself from urine. He never used to wash himself, you know, uh, whenever he would, he would uh, 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 pass urine. Huh? Urine is... Is dirty. Nam is dirty. Whenever we use a bathroom, we should make sure that we sit. Number one, number two, we should uh, make it stinger. We should use water to clean ourselves to wash the urine away. Nam like that, inshallah, our salah will be accepted. Huh? Our salah will be accepted. Now, why? Because the body will be clean, and this is one of the conditions for the salah to be accepted. Nam that our body should be clean. So this person was being punished in his grave because he was not protecting himself from urine. He was having the trace of urine uh, on his body. So because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was punishing him in the grave. But the second person, نعم, he used to Carry tail, he used to go between the people with Namima carrying tails, backbiting. You know, listening from, from this person as if he is so loyal to him and he takes the entire, all information to the person that was speaking ill about. No? And when he comments or when she comments, he will take the same back to this person. He causes frictions between the people. No? It causes friction between the people. So th this is one of the consequences of Al-Ghiba and Namima. S by speaking bad, uh, uh, evil about someone in his absence, you know, discussing people, uh, the person gets what? The punishment where? In the, in the, in the grave. Now, so in Fathul Bari, there's a hadith also mentioned. Now, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أكل لحم أخيه في الدنيا قرب له يوم القيامة فيقال له كله ميتا كما أكلته حيا الله أكبر The person who eats the flesh of his brother in the dunya قرب له يوم القيامة On the day of قيامة his body will be brought mean the body of the person that he spoke ill about will be brought in front of him in front of the one who backbite in front of the person who, you, who spoke ill about him. قُرِّبَ إِلَيْهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, كُلْهُ مَيِّتًا كَمَا أَكَلْتَهُ مَحَيَّةً The same way you ate his flesh when he was still alive, you should eat his uh, deteriorated, you know, his rotten body, uh, you know, his dead body, uh, now that he is dead. The same way you ate his flesh when he was still alive, you must also eat his flesh now that he is dead. You see, when a person dies, his body decomposes. Now, his body decomposes. And th there's a foul smell that comes out from that body. You know? So now, the sin of backbiting, the sin of speaking ill about somebody, it is as if you are eating the flesh of a dead person. So comes Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring that body, the body of the person that you spoke ill about. He will say to you, the same way you have eaten his body when he was alive, you should eat his body now that he is dead. Fayakuluhu. So he will start eating. He will start eating the flesh the, of the dead body. Yaklahu. Naam. Wayasihu. He will start screaming. He's eating and he is screaming. Yasihu. He is screaming. He is crying. Everyone can hear that this person has been punished. This person is crying because he has been forced to do what? To, uh, to eat, you know, uh, 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 the, the, the flesh of a dead body. Allahu Akbar. Now, so there's a word here in this hadith, وَيَكْلَحُ 
what is the meaning of yaklahu al kuluhu fi al lugha huwa irtifa' al shafa naam al shafa al ula ila muntasaf al ra'si wa nuzul al shafa al sufla ila muntasaf al sadr kalaha yaklahu al kuluh the hadith this this word al kuluh wa yakla so they'll force him to eat he will be screaming he will be screaming naam he will be screaming after that what will happen what will happen ha huh? his upper lip will be pushed upwards until the middle of his head allahu akbar look the upper lip the upper lip will be stretched until the middle of the the head and the lower lip will be pushed you know stretched until the until what until the chest until the chest this is very very painful my dear brothers and sisters so this will be the punishment for speaking ill about somebody imagine now to eat the the flesh of a dead person and your lip will be pulled will be stretched until the middle of your head now and the lower lip will be pushed until the chest at the same time you will be crying you will be screaming you will be worried why not abstaining in this dunya let me tell you something if somebody comes to you and say you know what i have information i got some news huh? some good news or news about so and so you must change the topic huh? change the topic or tell him to stop or stay away from that person why because if you listen to riba you will share in sin you're going to share with this person in sin on the day of qiyamah he will not be punished alone you will also be punished now give him some advice tell him you know what it's not good to speak bad, bad about somebody in his absence what you should do call him and sit down and correct him now advise him bring him back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he's doing something wrong he's in, in into alcohol he is into zina he is into you know uh, uh, robbery you know instead of speaking ill about him help him help him to come back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help him to come out of the weakness na help him unsuru akhaka zaliman aw mazluman this is a hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam help your brother who has been oppressed or help your brother who is the oppressor himself so a sahabi he say to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah o rasulullah i can help an oppressed person but how can i help the oppressor himself na then he said tamna'uhu an zulm you stop him from zulm you stop him from oppression na so now if you also stop the person who is making riba now you are helping him you are helping him yeah? you are bringing him closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will be a means of your salvation insha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ikhlas you know in whatever we do that we do for his sake that he accept our good deeds we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive each and every one every muslim who have passed away اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وسكنهم في الجنة اللهم اجعل قبورهم روضة من رياض الجنة اللهم تجاوز عن سيئاتهم يا ارحم الراحمين ان those who are sick may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant each and every sick person shifa and kamila complete shifa those who are going through difficulties may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them sabr and jamila and remove those difficulties away from them until we meet again assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh